afternoon everyone my name is Lara Kalab I'm doing my PhD with the collaboration of University of Po and the company Nabatak in Afkat and I'm here to present you my work related uh, to service composition it is entitled using color petri nets for verifying restful service composition this work that has been recently published uh, has been done under the direct supervision of Mikhail Mrisa, Richard Schbeer and Pierre Burro. So this is the outline that I will follow during my presentation. At first, I'm going to start by an introduction to define the context of the work and present a motivating scenario along with the problem statement. And then in the second section, I will uh, briefly present the most interesting approaches that were related to our uh, work domain. Uh, in section 3, I will present few background knowledge in order to understand or reach a good understanding uh, of the work that has been done. In section uh, 4, I will present the contribution. Section 5 will help the experimental illustration related to the contribution. And finally, a conclusion and some future work. Nowadays, web-based applications provide their functionality as web services, allowing language and platform independence and improving interoperability with other services. Recently, the REST architecture style uh, has become the most adopted solution or technology in order to implement and develop web services due to several factors such as its simplicity, its of use, scalability, and uh, its up support for many data formats other than XML. For example, by default, it's JSON, which uh, li it's, it is a lightweight format on the web, and it can be understandable by both machines and humans. In the REST architecture style, each web service is considered as a RESTful service and can be referred to as a resource. So, a resource provides a specific functionality in order to meet a certain request. However, some requests require the combination of two or more resources forming what we call a RESTful service composition. Now, in the literature there has been, uh, have been many work related to uh, web service composition and in particular to a RESTful service composition. However, uh, ensuring the proper behavior of such composition remains a challenge. And this is what I'm going to handle during my presentation. How to ensure probably the correct behavior of the composition. <coughs> Okay, here we are, uh, we are considering that the, combi uh, the uh, composition uh, is already done. So the selection and the linking between services uh, are made manually. And thus after composition, uh, the objective here is to, before the composition execution, we are considered that the composition is already built, to make sure that the behavior of this composition is, pro uh, is correct before being executed. So I'm not going to handle the selection, not even the linking between services. Here we are considering that the compos composition is already built and the objective here is to ensure its proper behavior before being executed. So our motivating scenario is related to the uh, hit to gap project, the one that uh, my colleague uh, Pierre Bourreau presented. So uh, this project holds 22 partners, the laboratory of University of Po, located in Anglet, along with Nubatek in Afkat, are partners of this project. Uh, the main objective is to reduce a uh, building energy gap occurred between the simulated energy during the design phase of the building and the uh, actual energy performance. So as a solution, we are developing currently a building energy management framework that offers several services. This framework has the following architecture. In the field layer, we have heterogeneous data 
sense from the building, for example, uh, internal temperature, internal humidity, and other related uh, building information, for example, number of rooms, number of levels. And we have also data sensed from other sources, for example, occupants regarding their presence in the building and uh, weather forecasts. So these data are collected in the field layer and will be stored in the storage system of head to gap In the core layer, other than the storage, we have also what we call basic services. Those are services that are used to pre-process or prepare the data before being uh, processed or used by the upper applications in the uh, management layer. So as an example of some basic service, we have, for example, service to uh, detect and correct missing values retrieved during certain timestamps. For example, we have another service to uh, detect and uh, correct outliers values uh, that are norm uh, values outside of the range of the normal values and other basic services that are important to ensure the quality of the data that are being processed by the application in the management layer. We have also on the core layer the APIs. So these APIs are used by the applications here. Currently, the application or the modules in the uh, management layer are being developed by the consortium partners. And for example, we have forecasting, the prediction, fault detection and diagnosis, and energy management. And those applications will use the uh, offered uh, services by accessing the APIs. So as we can see, this framework offers several services and modules. So these services and modules are encapsulated into RESTful service. So they follow the REST architecture style principles that I will present later on during the presentation. And each resource, as I said before, provides a certain functionality. However, some uh, building actor requests require the, uh, the combination of two or more resources. Uh, for example, if we consider the case of the building manager of one of the pilot sites of HitoGap that wants to predict the energy heat consumption of his building for the upcoming week. In order to do so, um, he first should collect the predicted internal temperature values. Such data is, receive, is retrieved directly from the heat to gap storage. He also should retrieve predicted external temperature. Now this data should be collected from an external server weather forecast. And since we are retrieving uh, data outside of head to gap so we need to make sure of the quality of the uh, collected data. And this is why he should use several services. Here we are considering that the building manager is uh, using missing values correction service and data outliers correction service in order to check and correct uh, the erroneous data of the uh, external temperature collected here. And once we have both two internal and external temperature related to the uh, upcoming week, uh, he can use these values uh, by the heat consumption prediction and predict his result. The result will help him to, for example, anticipate the building resource needs and to analyze the building energy behavior. So uh, considering that this composition has been already built, Ensuring its proper behavior, it's not an easy task to do for a building manager. In fact, several problems may encounter. For example, we know in the uh, energy domain, we have several types of prediction services. For example, they differ in the prediction model they use or the type of data that are being collected. If we consider that the building manager choose a um, heat consumption protection service that uses occupant number as one of its inputs. So here, the type of uh, data being used is an integer value. However, the merging point of these both two pre-processed services are an array of real values. So as we can see, there is a mismatch on the data type level 
and this will cause interoperability on the type level between resources and will affect negatively the composition behavior. Another example that the building manager may occur during his uh, composition building, he may in fact build a loop. And this loop will prevent the heat consumption and prediction service to run. And this will also affect negatively the behavior of the composition. Another problem, and since we are retrieving data from an external service or server that we do not have any direct control on it, uh, for technical reasons, this resource may not be responsive, uh, and thus other resources will not be able to run and this will also affect negatively the process the good process of the composition yes now we, uh, we we have several type of services in fact to retrieve uh, the forecast but in case we choose a service uh, this is the uh, uh, what we will handle in fact how in this um, uh, work if this resource is not uh, available uh, what we will do so we will verify that okay if the for example the uh, building actor chooses this uh, resource uh, the system will uh, alert him for example and say that the composition will not be uh, uh, functional but uh, 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 what we're gonna do after knowing that the composition is not uh, behave correctly this is not uh, treated here but at least he knows that his composition is not okay okay here we are we have uh, parallel resources or services that are being executed in parallel so we may have a conflict for example since they are accessing the same data so this is will lead also to a deadlock and this will also affect negatively the composition execution so in order to face such problems identified problems um, that we figured out in the context of uh, this uh, prediction scenario we need to verify <laughs> the composition behavior in the literature we have seen that verifying the composition behavior is related to the formal verification of some uh, formal properties reachability, persistence, etc. and such verification depends on the formal modeling of the behavior of the composition which relies this formal modeling on a formal language that has some clear semantics so what we needed is to have a modeling language to formally represent the behavior of the composition and apply few verification properties to verify these uh, properties that align with the problems identified the modeling language requirements has should have the follow should have the following requirements. In fact, he should support REST principles. And since we are uh, building composition uh, that uh, uses RESTful service composition, so this formal model should respect the REST principles. I will talk about them later during the presentation. Second requirement is its ability to handle data type, because we have. Uh, as we seen, um, I've seen in the problems, we might have interoperability issues on the data level, data type level. And thirdly, and most importantly, he should be it should be able to verify the composition behavior properties, interoperability, reachability, liveness, and persistence to align with the identified problems. So, in the literature, we were uh, interested in the approaches that were related to the formal behavior of composition and mainly to the restful service composition. So we analyzed patronet based approaches, finite state machine based approaches, linear logic based approaches, process algebra, so all these uh, 
petri nets, finite state machine, linear logic, and process algebra are formal models that were used to formally present the behavior of the restful composition. And even we analyze semantic-based approaches that were originally based on some formal uh, language. And even we analyzed non-restful service composition approaches, the SOAP-based approaches, in order to, in fact, analyze really the, these uh, uh, domains. So, after analysis, we noticed that some uh, were not, uh, uh, did not respect fully the REST principles, uh, others did not handle really data type, and all of them did not really analyze the uh, correct behavior of the composition. Mainly they modeled, in fact, the behavior, but not verified the uh, well behavior of the composition. So before I enter to the details of the contribution, and in order to reach a good understanding of the work that has been done, and uh, this uh, section, the background section, I will talk about uh, two uh, uh, things, the REST principles and colored petrinets, which is the which is the formal model that we based on our approach, and I will tell you why. So in REST principles, in the REST word, in fact, each web service is considered as a resource. Each resource is addressable through a URI, Unified Resource Identifier. In order to interact with uh, this resource, we rely on a uniform interface that provides a set of HTTP operations which are directly implemented by the HTTP protocol. For example, if I'm going to um, modify a resource, I use put, this is the HTTP verb that is implemented by the HTTP protocol, and I will define later the uh, address of the corresponding uh, uh, resource. So put address of the uh, resource, I mean I will modify this resource. I don't know if you are familiar with the rest, but this is a short introduction to understand well what I mean. The interaction between this resource is stateless. This means that all uh, re uh, requests are handled independently from each other, and the request contains all the required information that the server needs in order to process this request. So each resource is um, independent from each other. And finally, the most important principle, this is the latest trend, is the ATOS principle. Um, ATOS, uh, the principle here is to include within the response of the server what are the possible next resources that we can call based on the current state of the resource. For example, going back to the motivating scenario, once uh, the building uh, manager collect the predicted internal temperature and the response message of the server, there is a link, a URI link, about the next possible resource, which is in our case, the predicted heat consumption. So as uh, uh, we can uh, see this as a graph of services, linked services, uh, these links are implemented or established during uh, services design, and these services are linked. So we should, in, in fact, uh, uh, integrate such link within the request, uh, the uh, response uh, of the server. This is the principle of ATOS, which is the latest principle of the REST technology. Okay, colored patronets. Colored patronets are a mathematical and graphical model used to modelize or represent uh, distributed systems. Uh, an orderly patchy net, we have the transition represented by a rectangle. We have input places and output places uh, represented by circles. We have tokens represented by black dots. We say that a patchy net is enabled only if all of its input places contain the required tokens or value. Once the patronet is enabled, the transition can be fired or executed. So 
after transition is fired, the tokens are consumed from the input places and tokens are produced in all of its output. However, in ordinary PetriNet, we do not distinguish between uh, values or tokens. They are all identical, represented by black dots. So in more complex situations or application, we need to be able to distinguish between the values that we are holding. And this is why colored PetriNet combine the strength of ordinary PetriNets with the strength of high-level programming languages by adding what we call a color, a token color, on each uh, data being handled. So, for example, here we are seeing that the input place has a type, string integer, a couple of string integer, means that all the data embedded in this input place has type of a couple string integer. And this is the same logic of all the other places. So here, for example, it's um, an example of colored pattern app that will convert a temperature value from Celsius degree to Fahrenheit. And after transition execution, we obtain the real value. Formally, a colored pattern app is represented as follows. So sigma, it is the set of all data types that uh, the PetriNet or colored PetriNet uh, can is able to handle. P is a set of places, input places and output places. Transition is the set of all the transitions. A is a set of arcs linking places to transition and transition to places, but never places to places or transition to transition. Uh, C is the function assigning uh, data type to each place. Uh, G is a guard function. This is a Boolean condition. If it is true, the transition may fire, and this is a not a mandatory uh, uh, condition. Uh, a transition may have a uh, condition, and um, also uh, it can fire when once the values are here in all of uh, input places. So we we may add this condition. We may do, uh, have we may uh, remove this condition. The uh, E is an uh, expression function to put some expressions on the arcs and the I uh, initialization, initialization function in order to initialize few uh, input places into the patronets. So while we use colored patronets in our formal model, colored patronets bring expressiveness in modeling complex systems. They support graphical visual notation that aid in following the process at each step. So uh, we can, uh, in fact, uh, follow at each step what are the different states uh, that uh, are going through during the composition execution. It is able to handle data type by adding the color notion on each uh, place. Uh, they are also simulate the composition using existing tools in our work, we use the SIPA ANS tools, one of the most known uh, SIPA ANS tools. And finally, and most importantly, they were able to verify the properties identified in our problem statement. There are reach, uh, interoperability, reachability, persistence, and liveness. So, what we proposed is a colored patronet based language for verifying RESTful service composition. What we did in the first place is to do a mapping between SIPA ANS models and RESTful services. So, this is a simple colored patronet. This is the former representation of a colored patronet, and this is the graphical representation. And here, we are defining formally a resource. A resource for us is defined as follows. It's a couple of URI, which is the address of the resource, unified resource identifier, and N. N here represents the behavior of the resource, and N is 
related to the formal definition of CPM. So, the input place of the CPM is the input used by the resource. The output place of the CPM is the output, output place of the resource. The transition here represents the function of a resource. This seems normal, simple. However, we have some rest principles that we should respect in order to really be able to represent the behavior of a restful service composition and not a normal service composition. So what we did is to, in the input place, we defined a mandatory input that has the type HTTPU. It's a couple of HTTP and U. HTTP here represents the verb, HTTP verb, in order to be able to call the resource and you here is the address so this will aid in respecting the addressability and uniform interface principles of a resource is this a red uh, token or it's 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 you can call it um, networks if you can make color on the, on the in, port, in, yes. in patch nets we have the possibility to define your own colors, data type. Yeah. So, uh, in order to follow REST principles, I defined a type, uh, HTTP U. HTTP is a string, then a list of either put or post or delete or get. Yeah. I defined all the possible HTTP verb that we may have, and U here is a string. This is the address of the URI. Yes. And I said that this is the mandatory. So, in my formal uh, definition, this is mandatory, so each uh, resource could not have these two, yeah. but in order to be able to call this resource, I need to have this. Just, just understand the color is the... Is data type. The data type, so it's delayed, it has one color blue, put has one color green. No, no. No. Uh, this HTTP, the couple HTTPU has a color. Okay. If we, c if you ah, want to consider, yes, a color can be simple and can be complex. Okay. Simple, for example, string, boolean, integer, or complex, an array of mm -hmm. string, string, for example, or string, integer. Mm -hmm. Moreover, in the output side, we define two mandatory um, uh, uh, output places. This place contains data type of code and description. Uh, this is in order to, in fact, know what is the status of the response message uh, after re execution. For example, I don't know if you are familiar with some uh, description we may have if we uh, uh, do a get to get the representation of a resource, we may obtain uh, 200 successful. So this is, uh, this means that the uh, uh, resource has been treated successfully. And another output place, it is mandatory also, it's HTTPU. Now, these are two same uh, data type, but different semantics. In fact, here we are embedding uh, the links or the address of the next resources that we can call based on the status uh, of the resource. So this is, in fact, to follow the ATLAS principle. So in the message, we include these addresses. So a resource is for us a couple of URI and the behavior modeled with the CPMs. A URI is a unique address and is the formal modeling of uh, used by color patronets. Uh, sigma is a set of data types. P, input place, set of input places, output places. In the input places, we differentiate between an atomic resource, which is represented by a single uh, colored patronet, and with and uh, composed resource, which is a set of colored patronet. So in the first uh, part here, if the um, resource is atomic, so it is a set of input places. However, if the resource is composed, so the input place is a set of all the input places of the resource that uh, are composed of.
the same goes to uh, output places and as we can see here we oblige in our formal modeling that in the input of each simple resource we should have at least one input and in the output side we should have at least two outputs to uh, follow the rest principles t also if the resource is atomic simple so it's one uh, function and if the uh, resource is composed so it is a set of all the combined functions a uh, uh, the set of arcs remains the same so arcs are linking links link uh, transition to places places to transition never uh, transition transition or arc uh, uh, places to places c is a color function and here in the input place we said that there is one place that have uh, as a type HTTPU and from the uh, output side we also obliged to have two places one of type code and description and the in in another type to include the possible links or resources to code G is the guard function remains uh, 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 the, the same in colored patronats E arc expression in order to set arcs to the arc uh, expression to the arcs uh, I is an initialization function to assign values or uh, to initialize a few places. So what we did, in fact, we did not sh change any of the basics of color patronage. We only added a few modifications in order to follow RESTful uh, principles. And uh, because we based our formal model on, a fo on patronage, we were able to verify or use directly their uh, verification properties and thus now we are able in our approach in fact to verify the uh, properties that we need in order to uh, face the identified problems and the problem statement for the reachability uh, we were able to build in the uh, using colored patronets what we call a reachability graph which is a set of all possible states and within the reachability graph, we can also see what are the transitions or what are the resources that caused uh, the changes between a state and another. So, by checking that in the reachability graph, starting from initial state and make sure that the final state is reachable, we can make sure that the final reachable desired state which is in our motivating scenario <coughs> is to obtain a predicted uh, predi predi prediction result is verified. So by building the reachability graph and verifying that from the initial state we have prediction result, we have uh, verified the reachability property. Okay, in the colored pattern tool, uh, when we model, when we mo model a, uh, any sort of uh, system, in our case, a prediction uh, composition, we can build uh, or, or uh, directly reachability graph. It's embedded for in the colored pattern tools, and this reachability graph will say uh, what are the status uh, that the composition uh, will have during uh, ex its ex execution. It depends what transition is being executed or what resource. It depends on the input place. For example, once uh, the transition has the values in its input place, it can fire. So what we did in CPN is to modelize the prediction scenario in order to, in fact, follow uh, who will start first, which service will start first. And by setting uh, this model with the required input, we can check if the composition modeled can, be, uh, can reach, in fact, the final state. And the final state is recognized by uh, the patronat. If, if, if no, we do not uh, uh, make sure that the, uh, this is the final state. The final state in our case is to obtain 
in the output place of the energy heat prediction resource data. No, there is no time. Yes. There is no dynamic because uh, you can so the space it's 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 limited and uh, it's normal reachable analytics and you can play everything which is back 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 and you can compute it. So um, the idea here is to model. It's not a real. We do not treat with real values. Mm -hmm. It's about modeling in order to be sure of some properties. Regarding the liveness, also on the reachability graph, other than seeing this different state <coughs> of the composition, we may see also what are the transition that uh, have been fired in order to uh, change from state to another. This is the initialization function. Yeah. Yes. So you, if you, you can make only a reachability analysis if you don't have input parameters. Otherwise, you should infer about. Exactly. I should give the input places to both uh, yes. two first resources in order to let the composition uh, be executed. And so you didn't treat it. You didn't treat this case. No, I considered that I, I was the one that put the. Uh, configured the uh, composition uh, yeah. uh, to initialize in order to be able to model all the composition. So when you, okay, when you took your initial use case, uh, if, if, if you continue this consideration, which I understand, the, all these boxes of outlier detection and all the other detection, they are parameter for me. So if you have parameter which have to fit to them, yes. then, then, you, then you, you couldn't say that, that really if it's reach, yes, you couldn't apply this, this methods. So you estimate that um, one box is, is closed, or it doesn't depend on some... No, no. no. This, the, you mean the initialize, even if I initialize few places, which is in fact the... Uh, when, uh, because I, from the formal definition of uh, uh, petri nets, I should initialize in some way the composition. If not, I will never be able to modelize the composition. It will, it will not be able to run. However, for example, I may f uh, catch if there was a loop, for example, during the composition, or there is a, transi a transition that is linked to another transition, and there is a mismatch between this output of uh, um, uh, an output of a resource and another, so I cannot really um, verify these properties without initialization these uh, inputs. And this is applies on every uh, model in uh, in <coughs> CPMs. We cannot, uh, in fact, execute or modelize to see what are the status that are being changed without having these uh, first uh, inputs. Yes. No. More than a single. <coughs> a set of positions. It's one. It's one single graph that has that has several transitions linked through places, and these transitions are the function of the resources. I w uh, you, um, you will see in my uh, experiments how the prediction scenario 
has been modelized within CPMS. When I was exp explaining the um, contribution, I only uh, mapped, in fact, one single simple colored picture net with one resource. That's not a composed resource. And the uh, graph uh, representations. Yes, but for me, I, I, I was, uh, I would, in, in order to clarify, an atomic resource for me, it's one single picture net, and composed resource is, for me, is a set of single picture So it's picture net, colored picture net. In order to distinguish between simple picture net and the picture net, which is a set of all the transitions, etc. Yes, and in my formal definition, I said that one single patch in, uh, in my case, one resource, it uh, has one single transition, input places and output places. However, a composed resource has a set of all transitions of all the resources, and input place, for example, is a set of all the input places of all the transitions uh, embedded into this uh, composed resource. So this is the same semantics, but I just used the... Uh, yes, exactly. For example here, this is the, f the first uh, part is to refer to one single resource, which is one transition. However, if I have a composition of a resource, so a composition of transitions, a union of all the transition of each resource. <coughs> yes. Eventually, the composed resource, once it is executed and stored, will be treated as one resource that have input and output. But now here, um, Eventually, we cannot have a single resource without interacting with uh, several resources, and we should be able to verify the behavior of the internal behavior of these resources <coughs> in order to really create or uh, define this final uh, new composition that will eventually treat it as one resource. So we need to pass by uh, uh, this step. Even if we choose, for example, four resources to interact with each other, eventually, when we verify the proper uh, behavior of the combination of these four resources, we will have one new resource. And next time we will use this resource, we will not, in fact, verify its proper behavior, because we already verified that the uh, interaction the between these services are correctly made. building actor he may depends of the demand he may also choose another service here the objective we are considering that the compos composition is already made he can choose 10 resources eight resources or two resources the objective here is to be sure of the correct behavior and the selection of these resources are made manually it's not automatic composition
No, no, you can. If I did not answer correctly, maybe I am missing maybe something. Like, I think it's interesting in the experiment to see the mechanism. Yes, maybe because uh, you are seeing one, in fact, uh, yeah, patchy net because I modeled all the uh, scenario in one big patch in that model. So how you took it because you have an initially you have a use case which is very interesting with the different predictors mm. and now you have the color detail in between that is mapping is, is the question. Exactly. Is, uh, exactly. So uh, going back to the liveness property in order to be able to verify this property, based on the reachability graph uh, that will describe all the set of uh, possible states and the linking between states, so what transition made the change between this state and another, uh, in order to be sure that liveness is, um, is well verified, we should have at least all the transitions or the resources. So. Uh, starting from the initial state that uh, will uh, be described in the reachability graph, we have at least one time the transition or the resource has been executed. So we can be certain that during composition execution, all the resources during certain time during composition execution has been executed. And this is how we can make sure that all resources are alive. If uh, the interreachability graph, one transition or one resource is not present, so this means that this resource is not alive. So this will affect negatively the composition behavior. In order to check the persistence, so uh, one of the main power of the colored patch nets is that they, they are able to check for any two or more enabled transitions the firing of one will not disable the other. So going back to our motivating scenario and having these two parallel services that are being executed, uh, the patch net makes sure that uh, these the execution of these two so, uh, parallel services will not be interrupted, so they will not enter into a conflict, as long as both receive uh, the proper data. If not, they will... Uh, affect negatively the composition behavior. And finally, in order to check the interoperability, there is a constraint in the colored patch nets that say that all the data that traverse a uh, arc, input arc of a place, should be the same type of the, plate of the place that is connected to. So uh, if we want to link two resources this means that we want to connect two, uh, two uh, transitions. Uh, we should connect two transitions by one place. <coughs> the arc of this place should traverse data from the same type of the place. And this is also the case from the uh, place on the output arc. So this is how we can ensure in the colored patch map that two linked transitions or two linked resources are of the same type and the uh, colored pattern at model will not be able to simulate or execute it without respecting this constraint. If, for example, the linking um, was made, uh, was incorrect, the uh, tool will, in fact, highlight the place or where the connection is erroneous. Okay. So, in our experiments, we first modeled the motivating scenario in color patch I don't know if I'm uh, able to answer your question right now. So this is the colored patch of the motivating scenario. So as we can see, since um, we had, for example, here, this is the uh, predicted internal temperature, collected internal temperature. Those are related to the pre-processing pre services and these two are related to the heat prediction service. So if we uh, can, if we noted that each transition have at, has at least one mandatory uh, input place of type REC which is the couple HTTPU 
and also in the output side we have two monetary output plays which are the status of the uh, response and the rack type also which has what are the next possible links to call uh, based on the uh, resource state so this is how we linked the resources uh, related to our motivating scenario so Yes. A single pattern up? I will not call this single pattern up. A single pattern up for me is uh, this part here. This is how I defined a single colored pattern up. A pattern up is a set of all the. just to uh, distinguish between a simple transition and a set of transitions. In order to differentiate between an atomic resource and composed resource. Yes, this, uh, the graph also was a pattern, but j just for defining what is the difference between an atomic simple resource and a composed resource. Uh, are embedded into the Hitoga platform. Yes. And is there a single web resource that exists that makes this possible? I'm sorry, what? Is there a single web resource that? that uh, on which you send an operation which executes this process? In fact, let me um, say that these resources some directly connected to hit to gap but also uh, through hit to gap we can access other external resources such as weather forecast for example to predict the uh, uh, temperature and uh, to predict the external temperature so um, in hit to gap currently for the composition the building actor will be able to in fact uh, select he, he, he will see what are the possible services to use and based on his demand he, he will select and link these services and what will the model of the composition in Hintocap will do is to transform his modeling composition internally to Pachinat's model and we will be able to check or verify the properties so these resources exist and the building manager will uh, be able to see what are the possible resources or services that he can select and once he uh, select or model his composition what will module what the module will do is to verify certain properties in order to help him to execute properly the composition because if it is erroneous we are wasting uh, execution time etc so Yes. After uh, correctly uh, be sure of this composed service, this service <coughs> will be stored as a service into hit to gap and another building manager or the same building manager can use this composed uh, correctly behaved service, if I may say, as another single service and another compositions. So eventually, the composition will be treated eventually if it's, uh, it has a correct behavior as one uh, uh, service. So you are, you are 
andar fuera. input place, for example, will be these two input places. Okay. If we consider that this is correctly, uh, this uh, composition correct be, uh, behaves correctly, the input place will be these input places and the output place will be here. Yes, the changes of input places and output places will be, uh, will be changed according to the service. Not all the input places, but the definition remains the same. We can say that all input place of all the input resources are the input, or we can select, for example, we say that uh, some inputs will not be changed. For example, if the for the internal temperature, we have start date, end date, uh, and maybe a zone. So if we add the building zone, we can. Uh, in fact, we have this option in the composition that say. Uh, while uh, building the composition, the building actor, he can say that start date and date will be the input place of the composition, uh, but uh, zone will not change, in fact. It will remain, if, uh, even though the composition behavior uh, is correct, so the second time the composition going to be used as a single service, this zone ID will not be able to change. It will also, uh, always refers to the zone ID that said previously. However, start date and, de and end date can be choose, can be selected uh, or uh, modified. So, why encapsulate? Because to facilitate this uh, manner to other, uh, we do not have any one single service that ha that behaves internally as a set of composed services. This is the whole objective. In order to be able to respond to complex uh, user requests and to facilitate uh, the um, the work for the next possible request. For example, if I today uh, created or built in composition, if I'm going to use this uh, later on in composition in other scenarios, I have to, if uh, this composition is not treated as one single uh, composition uh, resource or uh, service, why do I have to repeat and uh, build again the uh, composed service? It's only to facilitate the work and to have added value on what we have currently in the head to gap platform or even in the web. For example, currently on, on the web, every service, RESTful or not, provides a single function or not a single, a specific function, if I may say. But there are uh, complex uh, requests that sometimes cannot be uh, realized by one single service. And this is why RESTful composition or even web service composition um, is an added value for these uh, for these uh, uh, services in order to be able to respond to some complex demands of uh, users in order to be able to really uh, combine the strength of several services and have uh, a well provided functionality to meet the user requirements. Yes, and here we are aiding, and if they want to compose, we are aiding them in verifying if their composition uh, has been well done or not. Yeah. 
first part was, was I didn't understand myself, so this is now clearer, but uh, this discussion on the output we and Okay. We can uh, <coughs> discuss this after. <laughs> okay, so yes. Uh, okay. Sec okay. Okay. Second step, based on the uh, formalized model, we were able to build the reachability graph. This is our final state, which is obtaining the result or the prediction result in the last resource, which is energy heat prediction, and directly by using colored petronets. Uh, tools, you were able to verify that, that this final desired, reach, uh, desired uh, state is reachable from the initial state. Um, and we noticed that uh, from the reachability graph that each of the transitions that has been modeled in the uh, composition model, uh, at some point each transition will be executed. So this also uh, aid us in verify the liveness. Another way to uh, check the liveness, other than using reachability graph, we uh, there is some uh, some tool um, called NCPN's tool, state space report. It's, it's a report that uh, describes what are the properties uh, that are um, uh, verified and what are properties that are not verified. For example, here we have a note. Uh, that saying that that transition instance is none. So we do not have any resource or that transition and, uh, we, and thus we can make sure that all resources at some uh, point during composition are being executed. And the liveness also is related to persistence because if uh, while executing two parallel uh, resources, if one disable the other because they are uh, that have been in conflict, uh, liveness also by making sure that at some point this transition is executed we can be sure that the persistence property is well verified and finally the interoperability um, in colored pertinence we cannot uh, simulate the model uh, composition uh, without making sure that data types or places are uh, being linked correctly so if so at some point the linking between services ha um, uh, has been done uh, erroneously, so this will, in fact, we can know by highlighting, in fact, where are the mismatch regarding the uh, mismatch of the data type between between the linking transition. So uh, this also has been covered. So as a conclusion. Uh, what we did is to, uh, we based our formal modeling on colored patronets in order to uh, represent the behavior of restful composition. And by using this formal model, we were able to use directly the verification properties in order to verify um, the properties uh, uh, that align with the identified problems uh, that we uh, previously mentioned. As future work, or currently, I'm working on uh, this work right, right now, um, is uh, because in this work, the composition and selecting services and linking between services has been done manually. Uh, we are aiming to um, transform this manual composition to automatic composition. And in order to do so, we should in, fa in fact describe each uh, RESTful service and add some semantics in order to um, automate the discovery task, in order to discover what are the services that can be candidate to the composition and to be able to automatically select the best ones and to orchestrate automatically between these services and to obtain the optimal composition that will realize the demand of uh, the end user. And uh, moreover, we are um, interested in including some quality of service constraint in the verification. For example, uh, uh, the, <coughs> maybe the priority of the services or the uh, availability of some services. As I said, because, for example, going back to your question, some services may not be available mm -hmm. at certain time because we do not, we do not have any direct uh, cont uh, control on, uh, on them. So this will also 
uh, be taken into consideration in order to avoid these kind of problems. So these are the references. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Okay.